In this chapter, we're going to be looking at financial services. In this lesson, we're going to look at borrowing money. All right, everybody, in this lesson, we're going to look at borrowing money. So, like it says up here, at times you may want or need to borrow money and make a large purchase, like, like a car or a house. Those are kind of our standard examples for, for large purchases here. Uh, there are multiple ways you can borrow money, and some of which include, and here we go, personal loans, lines of credit, overdrafts. Uh, if you do not make your, your loan payments as agreed, it's called defaulting, and legal action can be taken against you. Okay? Um, yeah, If you're not paying back the money that's owed, um, when you take out a loan, you enter into a contract. And so uh, you want to be, you want to make sure that you're going to be in a position where you can make these payments. Okay. Now, having said that, if you run into difficulty here, there, there are things that, that can be done to help you get through that. Um, but you, you need to plan to be paying that back. Now let's talk about personal loans here. A personal loan is a set amount of money borrowed at a fixed interest rate and paid back over a set amount of time. Okay, you like again, you enter an agreement with the bank or or the loaning institution here and you you say, you know, I will I agree to pay this back at by this amount of time here. Now, on the other hand, there's something called a payday loan and it's a short-term personal loan but with a very high interest rate. And these are usually used in the case of an emergency. Okay? So, uh a case where like I need the money and I need it like right now. I can't, I don't have the time to, to maybe negotiate uh, this loan um, with, with the bank here. I have to go get it now here. But they're usually not a great idea because of those really high interest rates. Okay, but again, circumstances will kind of dictate what what you what you need to do here. A line of credit offers more flexibility than a personal loan. So what happens is you borrow money up to a pre-approved amount. So you, you go to the bank, uh, again, or the institution, and they um, they determine how much they're willing to let you have. And then you'll only charge be charged interest on the amount of the line of credit that you actually use. So you might be approved for 10000 but if you're only going to use 5000 that's that's what the, uh, the interest rate is going to be, or the interest is going to be calculated on. And then overdraft protection... Okay, your bank may offer overdraft protection. This allows you to withdraw more money than you have in the bank. Okay, so it's every once in a while it happens where there's more month than there is money. And so sometimes you dip a little into the negative and that's what this overdraft protection is, is there for. So here's what TD Canada Trust has to offer in terms of overdraft fees. So what is an overdraft fee? Okay. It occurs when your available balance is not sufficient to cover a transaction. So there's a $35 fee per overdraft and up to five overdraft fees per per day. So, you, you, but you got to watch that because think about that. If if you're already at the bottom of your bank account uh, and you make, let's say, three purchases, okay, if the money's not there, let's say, <laughs> let's say you're down to zero and you buy a you buy a, a coffee, well. If you don't have the money in your account to cover that, that cup of coffee just cost you $35 extra. And let's say you bought a coffee on the way to work and the way back. Those two cups of coffee in that day cost you $35 each. So you want to pay attention to that. Make sure that you don't, you don't have, um, or you, that you have enough money in your bank to cover those sorts of expenses there. But it is nice uh, to know that in, in certain circumstances here, the bank will allow you to, to do this. Okay, uh, once again, if their need arises. All right, let's have a look at a question here. It says, Richie's car insurance of $1,300 was due in two days, and he did not have the cash available. So he went to the payday loan store for a loan, and he had to repay the store $1,524.78 within 14 days. Now, in two weeks... He has to pay in interest, okay. So not just the not just the thirteen hundred back, but in interest, an additional two hundred twenty four dollars and seventy eight cents. That's that's a lot of interest for just two weeks, okay. If you think back through some of the the other examples that we've looked at in this in this chapter, okay, uh, looking at interest rates and whatnot and the growth, we're looking at maybe. In some cases, uh, with credit cards, what on a couple of dollars over two weeks? This is this is large. Okay, this is quite large here. Let's have a quick look and see how large. 
So first of all, let's figure out how much money we're paying in interest here. So it's going to be how much we paid back minus how much we we used or we we borrowed for, and that's two hundred twenty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents. Now, let's let's assume just simple interest here. So two hundred twenty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents on a loan of thirteen hundred dollars here. Okay, our daily rate, and then times uh, what was it fourteen days here. So when I take and divide this two hundred twenty-four dollars and seventy-eight by uh, thirteen hundred, and then multiplied by fourteen, I'm just going to move that fourteen over here. The rate that I'm going to get here is approximately zero point zero one two three five da da da, or or roughly one point two percent a day. Now, okay, you might have. You might look at that and think, well, it's just one point two percent. Like one point is so small, it's tiny. One point two percent. But the issue is, it's per day. Okay, per day, not per year, per day. So, what was the annual interest rate? Well, okay, let's let's take a quick look at this. Okay, um, if if we figure that out here, let's I t I tell you what. Just for fun here, let's take that two hundred and twenty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents. Two two four seventy-eight. We this is how much interest we got over um, fourteen days. Let's divide this by fourteen. So we are spending sixteen dollars and what amounts to about six cents. Now I'm rounding that, but six cents per day. Okay, and just to verify that that's that's in the ballpark here, let's take that thirteen hundred and multiply that by point zero one two. Yeah, okay. Now remember, we're still working with kind of an approximations here, and I'm, I'm rounding the numbers here and there. But I've got roughly sixteen bucks here at one point two percent per day. That's that's what we're we're spending here. So, if I take that now, and we're going to multiply that, okay. So now I've got a, a larger decimal in my my calculator when I do this. So I'm going to multiply this by three hundred and sixty five. Whoops. Don't know why I want to do three fifty six. That was weird. 365, that's how much interest I'm going to earn in the full year. And I'm going to divide that by the 1300 here. Turns out I get 4.5079, okay, five, dot, dot, dot. But now think about that. That's not 4.5%. I haven't moved the decimal over. That's 400 and roughly 51% interest yearly. That's why this needs to be something that happens in just an emergency and we really want to make sure that you can pay it back as soon as you can because the interest rate is just ridiculously high, crazy high. Okay? But they these these payday loan things, they do they do serve a purpose here, but you just got to be really careful and and know what you're getting. Now here in next one question here, Barris borrowed $500 from a payday loan company and had to repay $625 in 9 days. Okay? Let's Let's calculate the annual interest rate. Well, what we want to do here is figure out how much money did he did he pay per day? How much interest are we paying per day here? So to do that, we're going to take that 625, how much he actually paid, and we're going to subtract 500. The difference will be the interest, and we're going to divide that by 9. And what we get here is it's $13.89 per day. Now, that means over the course of the year, at $13.89 per day, if we multiply that by 365, that'll be how much how much we uh, uh, Barris is going to pay here in a year in interest. Let's divide that by 500 okay, to convert that into a percentage. We want to figure out what percentage of that 500 uh, we're, we're paying here. And it turns out this ends up being approximately 10.13, and it's like eight repeating. And again, don't misinterpret this. This isn't 10%. I got to move the decimal now. That's 1,013.9% interest, or 1,014% or interest per annum per year. Okay. Very, very large percentage rate. In this question, we read that Chelsea borrowed two hundred and ten dollars from a payday loan store. She paid back the loan uh, plus interest eight days later. 
Okay. So just a hair over a week, the interest rate was 392% per annum. Okay. Now that's, that seems uh, reasonable based on what we've just seen here. I mean, I've, I've we've seen something that's three times that, but we also saw a question where it was, was 451%. So that it's up at 392. Okay. That's even a little bit lower than some of these other ones. Okay. So how much did Chelsea pay back to the loan store? Well, okay. First of all, she's going to pay back the $210 plus the interest. Now, the interest here was going to be 210 Okay, we're going to convert this interest rate uh, to a daily interest rate. So I'm going to move the decimal over, so 3.92. So remember, we want to, we want to convert the, the percentage to a fra uh, decimal just by moving that decimal over. And then... We want to divide that. That's an annual interest rate. So we're going to divide that by 365. And then we're going to multiply it by the number of days. So she paid back uh, the initial amount plus the interest being charged on that. And when all was said and done, it was $228.04. Okay. $228.04. So the next part of this question asks, how much interest did she pay? Well, she paid. When we find the difference between what she what she paid and what she borrowed, the difference there was eighteen dollars and four cents. So in one week, that's how much she earned. Now, just for interest sake, just huh, interest. I just realized that was a joke there. Just for to see how this would work here, that's what she paid in eight days. So in just over a week. So just let's just treat this as if that's what she paid in a week. If we multiplied by that by 52, so in one year, she paid close to $1,000 okay, in interest on a loan uh, like that. In this question we read, Lincoln went to a payday loan store and borrowed 850 bucks for 24 days at 1.35% per day. How much money did Lincoln have to repay, uh, pay the payday loan store? Okay. So he borrowed $850. So how much is he going to have to uh, pay back? Well, he's going to have to pay back. The total here is going to end up being $850. So how much he borrowed plus the interest rate here. So it's going to be $850. Now he's paying 0 0.0135. That's, that's the interest rate per day for 24 days. So then we just multiply that by 24. Again, it's it's... It's deceptive because this 1.35% per day, it doesn't seem like that big of a percentage, but it's because it's per day. It's happening so fast. And when you, we multiply that through, it ends up that Lincoln's going to owe here $1,125.40, okay, which is significantly more uh, than what he had to borrow. So in this question, we read that Nick was approved for a $10,000 line of credit through his bank. Now, Nick uses the line of credit to pay for his first year tuition of post-secondary education, which was $7,418. The line of credit has an interest rate of 3.95% per annum. Okay, see, now we're, we're dealing with numbers that are kind of similar to what we were seeing with the payday loan stuff. However, this is per annum, not per day, okay? So per year as opposed to per day here. So Nick pays back his tuition amount in 60 days. How much interest is he going to, to owe here? Okay, well, he's not going to pay interest on the 10000 The purpose of the 10000 here was simply to let us know that uh, that he qualified, right? So he gets this, this line of credit, but he only needs this amount here. So how much is he going to pay in interest? Well, it's going to be $7,418.00. We've got this daily interest rate, so it's going to be point zero, sorry, yearly interest rate, point zero three nine five. We need to make it a daily interest rate by dividing it by 365. And then we're going to multiply that by 60 days. Okay, now you could, you could think of this another way by taking the yearly interest rate and then multiplying it by 60 days over 365. You can either take and make the interest rate... Uh, make the interest rate match the the day uh so the time units or make the time units match the interest rate it doesn't really matter it's just a matter of what you end up doing is just moving the divide by 365 one number over which really doesn't change anything here 
Anyway, so how much interest do you have to pay when you evaluate that? You end up with $48.17. Now think about that. Let's just compare this one. So this is 60 days. How much interest would he pay? $48. Up here, this was 24 days and they ended up pay paying a little under $300. Okay, Just something to consider. If you have the time to go in there and set up a line of credit, this is a cheaper way to do it. So this question says, Elena was approved for a $20,000 student line of credit through the uh, TD. TD has a special deal that lets her pay it back within one year of finishing her program without interest fees. Okay, so no interest on that first year. So she uses this line of credit to pay for her tuition. Now that's $3,970 per semester for two semesters. Okay, uh, a rent, uh, sorry, rent of $900 a month for eight months. And then an emergency vet bill for her cat mittens of $600. Okay, so the annual interest rate for a student line of credit is uh, TD prime rate plus 1.5. Now, this is something that you're probably going to do at the moment uh, that you look at this. At this moment right now, when I went to look this up, the TD prime rate was 2.45. So sticking with that here, that leaves us with a rate of 3.95. Now, if Elena pays back her loan in 18 months, now notice that's more than a year. Okay, that's, that's six months more than a year. How much interest does she have to repay? Okay, well, she doesn't get charged interest for the first 12 months. The assumption here, by the way, is also that she's saving up this money and then just, boom, making a payment on it, um, as opposed to making regular payments back here. But anyway... So what we want to do here is, uh, sorry, how much interest does she pay? So we're going to figure this out by taking the total uh, and then minus what was borrowed. Okay. Now, in this particular case, here, actually, I, sorry, I don't know why I'm doing it like that. This isn't total minus borrowed here. This is just going to be the, the total that we're, we're borrowing here. And we're going to multiply this by the appropriate uh, percentage here. So we're going to multiply this by the rate of the time here. So the total was 3,917, sorry, I don't know why I wanted to do it that other way, plus 900 times 8, plus 600. So this is how much she she's using. $3,917 per semester for two semesters, $900 rent a month for eight months, plus the $600 for her kitten. Now, she's getting that 3.95% per year, Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, because we're talking about months here, I'm going to make this a monthly interest rate. And then what we're going to do is multiply by the number of months, which in this case is just going to be six. She's only going to pay for the six months beyond the first, the first 12, right? Because she got that first 12 months interest free. And when we put that all together, it's going to cost her $273.60 in interest.